Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here. First people who joined us. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Well, thank you, everyone, to join the, the meeting today, uh, this webinar. And so let me introduce myself. My name is uh, Laurence Fontaine. I work in CNA, uh, National Center for Agroecology in France. CNA is uh, one of the partners of the, the NBSOL project. Uh, and so we are 23 person currently. We, we have about 50 people uh, who registered, so I guess they will join us later. Uh, but uh, well, this is quite exciting to see your, your interest in soil health and in the NBSOL uh, Academy. So let me um, show you uh, the, the agenda, a quick overview of the agenda. So first we'll have an introduction by uh, Javier Montelano from Revolve. Uh, Javier will tell us more about uh, what is the NBSOL project. Then uh, Anya Hopma from Ver de Terre Production will uh, speak to us about the launch of the launch of the MOOC and then we'll have uh, an overview of uh, other valuable resources by uh, Karen Fisher from the Solar Association and then we will end with the traditional uh, question and answer session uh, so about the questions so we will uh, group all the questions at this uh, last session so please write your questions in the chat and uh, try to present yourself in the when you write also the, the question. Uh, just say uh, who you are and why you, you, you joined the meeting. And uh, well, I think, uh, yes, the last recommendation. So please make sure to turn off your microphone during the presentations and uh, remember to write your questions in the chat. So I think this is uh, this is it. So yes, let's enjoy the meeting. And uh, Javier, the the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Laurence. So uh, yeah, yeah as, as Laurence introduced me, I'm Javier Montellano. I'm working as project manager for NBSOL. I'm really happy to uh, see you here, to see the interest, and to finally. Uh, have the have the project uh, delivering results and getting into action can you please uh, go to the next slide with the basic information so uh mb soil is the acronym for nature based solutions for soil managers that's our project and the topic uh, that we are uh, addressing is the new generation soil uh, advisors uh, the other icons you see there is uh, uh, most of the funds come from the european union and then there's also the UK funding agency and Switzerland, as we have partners from UK and, and from, uh, from Switzerland. Can you go to the next slide, please? So, so MB Soil is a, is a project, is a research and innovation project that be, belongs to the Soil Mission. Uh, the Soil Mission is uh, a new initiative to kind of or organize or to dynamize uh, research. So uh, it's, uh, it funds many projects and they all have uh, some common objectives and they're uh, working together uh, in a way that is much more encouraged than uh, in previous uh, programs. So the, all the soil missions, the, all the missions are within uh, Horizon Europe and we are a part of it. We are the, the project uh, that is addressing so directly soil advisors and soil advice and uh, we have the the challenge as the whole whole soil mission to address soil health uh, not only in agriculture and forestry uh, where there's there's already uh, resources and, and soil advice uh, system that uh, the our colleagues from soil association will explain later later more about what is available but also uh, uh, soil advisors for urban and post-industrial settings that there are already some experiences but the road is still not not defined can you please go to the next slide so a little bit more about the eu missions and the, this one the soil deal for europe 
its uh, main objective is to create this network of 100 living labs and lighthouses. To uh, living labs, uh, if you're not familiar with the concept, is a is a they are place based a, a co creation with multiple stakeholders and focus on concrete solutions. They are they are being so it's it's a participatory. Yeah, and it's it's also about uh, a lot of it involves uh, facilitation discussion, but also uh, practical practical testing and uh, researchers interacting with uh, practitioners, with uh, with citizens, with consumers, consumers, etc. So it's uh, very ambitious. And from our side, uh, we will also support these uh, living labs, uh, taking taking care of the part that is related to soil advice and to the role of soil advisors, also as uh, facilitators, uh, participants, and mediators. Can you please go to the next slide? These are the eight objectives of the of the soil soil mission. That they they kind of cover a wide range of uh, soil related challenges. So the first one is uh, reduce uh, cer the certification and land degradation. The second one conserve soil organic carbon stocks. The third one, is, is, which is especially relevant in urban areas, stop soil sealing and increase reuse of urban soil. Uh, the fourth one, reduce soil pollution and enhance uh, restoration. Uh, the fifth one, prevent erosion. The seventh one, improve soil structure to enhance soil biodiversity, which is still uh, a great mystery in many ways. The ninth one, reduce the EU global footprint on soil. So this is, this goes beyond the EU. It's like, don't uh, prevent your, or don't improve your soil health at the cost of importing uh, products from around the world, which are damaging soil health. And the last one, which is also very nice that is included is improve soil literacy in society. We are focusing on, on knowledge and soil advisors, but this is also about ev ev everybody else from children to adults, uh, to any citizen. Can you please go to the next slide? So where do we fit here? So our vision of this new generation of soil advisor, which was the topic proposed and we had to address, uh, is uh, is linked to successfully uh, knowledging, uh, knowing and implementing these nature-based solutions. And, and then developing in inclusive, knowledge-intensive models and uh, soil advisors mediating and having this role into translating a theory and research into, into practical solutions. Here you see in the graphic uh, the icons for the nature-based solutions that they are uh, uh, very well explained in the in the MOOC, and they have also been chosen to be able to address all these challenges, which are uh, in the in the objectives of the of the soil mission, and of course not in isolation, but all these nature-based solutions they can be combined. Can you please go to the next slide? This is a uh, in the in the MOOC. You will see uh, also the def definition and the and the global standard for nature-based solutions by the EUCN. This is uh, another definition which is given by the by the European Commission, uh, which I also like because it says, "and nature-based solutions are inspired and supported by nature." But and but then the another very important point is that you need to address at the same time environmental, social, and economic aspects. It's not enough to just uh, address one of them, or it's not about choosing one over the other. And here you see also a representation of the all the sectors we try to to address. And as you know, uh, in landscapes they often overlap, and and this is uh, this is also part of the of the challenge, like to how to keep a holistic vision and, and address uh, multiple challenges and reconnect ecosystems. Can you go to the next slide, please? So this, uh, this um, introductory MOOC is actually opening the way for the Envy Soil Academy. And we are looking for 300 and existing and inspiring soil advisors to join and uh, prototype this uh, learning pathway together. What will it mean? As part of a research and innovation project, it's not an official training yet. So actually the participants 
will be co-researchers. And uh, uh, what we expect is to, to find people who are motivated by being these agents of change and, and learn together, but also uh, create uh, recommendations and content for, for other trainings, more specific, more national based, uh, online, more, more physical and, and really kind of, uh, renovate all these, all these resources that the soil association will explain later more. We are very happy that we already have over 60 people uh, pre-registered and we will start this uh, co-creation and design uh, phase uh, after, after, after Christmas. Can you please go to the next slide? Uh, this uh, the soil academy is uh, is built on four advanced models which have all like all the skills or all the superpowers that we think this new generation of soil advisors might uh, need. Uh, the first one about soil and uh, nature based solutions, which is uh, actually very much uh, in a way like a kind of expanded and upgraded version of the MOOC, uh, but uh, also dealing with the with the, uh, much more into the scientific content, all the all the tests, all how a specific the nature based solutions can be specific for its uh, region, its climate, its system. The second one, uh, facilitating living labs. For soil health is about all these soft skills for soil advisors, participation, uh, mediation, and all participatory projects, not only living labs. Uh, the third one about digital tools for soil health monitoring and mapping. Then it deals with uh, with sampling. It deals with gathering data, with sharing data, with visualizing with visualizing data uh, in a way that is appropriate for 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 many use users and also to foster collaboration between advisors or advisors and and other and other experts to solve all these uh, complex problems and finally improving decision making in business and policy is dealing with this part of the economy and all the regulatory framework from the big eu policies which in the end have a great influence into the business models the funding available uh, and the day-to-day -day decisions and uh, like for example uh, recently this uh, nature uh, restoration law that is still has to take this final shape and be implemented but has many targets which are very relevant for pitlands for agricultural ecosystems uh, can you please go to the next slide which and this is the last so thank you very much and uh, yeah Let's uh, hear more about the, the book. So, Anya, so you can go on now on about the, the MOOC launch and the still a recommendation for the new people who joined the meeting. So you can write your questions in the chat. And uh, also, please uh, tell us in the chat why you are here today and present yourself, introduce yourself. So, Anya, for you. Thank you, Laurence. Um, so the, I'm very happy to introduce the MOOC today to share information about what to expect if you sign up for the course and uh, share a bit of background information about how we created, created the course and what its goals are um, with the audience we're targeting. So that's what I'll go through in the next uh, 20 minutes or so. So first off, who created this course? Um, who amongst all of the partners uh, in the NBSOIL project has been uh, working on this course over the past few months. Um, we have the, the CNR, um, who, which, is, uh, which Laurence is re representing today. So that's really an umbrella organization in France um, that uh, has a network of experts who work together on creating training or leading events or creating documentation around agroecology in France. So they were able to uh, help us find a lot of experts who could contribute to the course and um, who we could interview and who uh, read through a lot of the content. The other people involved are Verdita Production. So I'm a member of um, Verdita Production. Uh, I'm uh, working on content there. and. It's a training organization that's been around for about 10 years in France that started off in market gardening and that now has a lot of training content for farmers, all different types of farmers. And then so we, we were involved with Sienna on dividing on them, deciding on the, uh, the course outline and then producing all of the content. And then we really worked hand in hand with the Soil Association 
um, who reviewed all the content that really helped us find more experts that who we could interview and get them get them involved in creating the content as well. So they were we could not have done, created this course without them. And I won't introduce them any further because the person speaking just after me is from the Soros Association, so they will be able to introduce the organization a bit more as well. So those are the people behind it. And then uh, why, why have we created an online course? What are the key goals? Um, many of them were mentioned by Javier. But the, uh, the first one is really about, it's, the aim of the course is to raise awareness about nature, nature-based solutions. So um, it's uh, not only their existence, so some of the ones that are covered in the course aren't very well known, for example, um, or could deserve to be better, better known by the general public. So bioremediation, for example, um, needs to be, uh, we want to raise awareness about the, the existence of that. Uh, and as well, uh, another, another example is polluticulture, which is a, a new form of agriculture on wetlands, and it deserves to be um, better known by the general public. And then also we wanted to raise awareness about the complexities of certain of the nature-based solutions which are presented in the course. For example, um, cover crops, as uh, they're, they're quite well known that it's um, good for soil to, to cover the soil, but actually implementing that in the field, um, finding the right mix of cover crops to, to sow at the same time. There's a lot that's been learnt about that over the last 20 years. And so the course helps highlight that um, some of these solutions, we definitely need people to specialize in providing advice around them so that they can scale up and be used by more and more people. So we raise awareness as well, as well about the complexities and the fact that we need training on this. I think we've lost the slides there, Marta. They're back. Okay. <laughs> so that was the raising awareness idea. And then the other thing, the other goals, if you keep moving on, Marta, to the next slide. Yep. Um, it's about encouraging vocations as well. So people who might be interested in sort of advice and want to explore a career in that area and get further training. There's a whole part of the course with the recommendations for training uh, that you can you can follow across Europe online or in person. So we really list that at the end of the course for people to seek out more um, more training opportunities. And we explain what the day-to-day -day life um, of a sort advisor look, can look like. The target audience, uh, like Javier said, is very wide for this particular type of this this particular component of the Soil Academy. So it's wider than the Soil Academy advanced modules. Who they're, they're more specialized. They have prerequisites, whereas this MOOC has no technical prerequisites. So anyone interested in soil in soil in general in Europe can sign up. Um, there's no agronomy prerequisites um, or anything else. So it's very um, much open to anyone in the spirit of an open online course. And if you move on to the next slide, this is what you'll find in the course. Um, it's structured in eight modules. So we start with an introductory module, um, which defines nature-based solutions, like Javier defined them, defined them in, in his presentation. That's also covered in the course. So um, explaining what they are, where they, where they come from, um, and then also what it means to have healthy soil, what the threats are to soil in Europe, some statistics around that, and some of the things that, the processes that occur when um, health, um, uh, when soils become less healthy. So why it's really important that we restore um, soils in Europe or we, we improve soil health. That's introduced as a first part of the course um, before then moving on to the actual individual nature-based solutions, which are all listed here. So the first three organic fertilizers, cover crops and pluticulture, they're all covered in individual sections. Those are, those are all the agricultural nature-based solutions. And then we move on to the three other ones, which are about soils elsewhere. So industrial sites in forests or in urban areas. Um, all of those things, are, all of those different solutions are covered in the course. And in a few slides time, I'll say, I'll, I'll explain what is, expl what is um, information is included in each of these different modules because um, it's a very similar structure from, from one to another. And then finally, there's that end, that last part of the course about uh, considering a career in soil advice. So um, what, what training opportunities are out there? And then uh, a few videos about what it looks like to, to work in soil uh, advice. So um, soil testing, for example, a soil quality testing, there's lots of um, demonstrations of um, how that's done by people in the field. So um, to give you more of a preview about what you'll learn in the first module, here are 
lots of images um, about uh, extracted from the course. So either photos or visuals, visuals that we've created or videos that you'll find in there. And so by the end of part one, you'll be able to answer all of these questions that are here on the screen. Uh, what are soils like in Europe today? What is so why is soil health important? What causes poor soil health? What is the EU soil mission doing? So what um, have you explained uh, in his presentation? That's also covered in the course, uh, the, the soil mission, um, some of their key actions uh, that they've implemented so far. And then what can nature-based solutions do for soil? What have they been doing in um, climate um, in uh, natural disaster prevention, for example, and how now we want them to, we want to also mobilize them in, in soil. So that's uh, part one. There's lots to, to learn in that part of the course. And then an example of what the, um, the core, the heart of the course is about. So each of these modules about the different solutions. These are all the things that you'll, that the questions here on the screen are what you'll be able to <clears throat> answer about is each of these different nature-based solutions by the end of each of the modules. So it's, um, a definition of what that nature-based solution is. So what are cover crops? How do they actually help soils? And then throughout the course, there's lots of um, examples of case studies of successful um, projects that have been implemented, where cover, for example, where cover crops have, have really helped. And so here on the screen, you can see in the bottom uh, left-hand corner is a video, um, it's actually from the Soil Associ Association's YouTube channel from one of their programs in innovative farming. And it's um, about people who grow hops in the UK and they introduced cover cropping into their um, agricultural practices. And then so they explain in that video what it did for them and how they learn more about it. And it's a really great example and an interesting thing to include in the course um, to illustrate um, a lot of the uh, information that we want to share in a very um, powerful way. And then also in each of the nature-based solutions, in each of these modules, we'll explain what the EU policies say about each of these nature-based solutions. So we've done research on some of the, the laws like the EU um, nature restoration law or the soil monitoring law and explain how um, each of them either promote or what they could do perhaps in the coming years, what we can um, help shape those uh, directives um, into uh, before they're they are um, adopted um, to make sure they include more of these nature-based solutions. And finally, what are the current challenges each of these nature-based solutions are, are, are facing, uh, which are preventing them from scaling up? And that highlights uh, where there's more research that needs to be done or where more, more funding is required um, or where more training is needed. So then there's a final part of the course, which is the part three. Um, or the, the, the very end of the course, consider a career in soil advice. So there you, you can see on the screen that there are lots of um, videos in this part of the course about uh, soil testing. And so, for example, here on the screen, you can see there's the VES, um, the VES tool where you can take a, um, analyze it, um, some soil and compare it to photos and descriptors and then d define the, what the, the soil structure seems to be for this, this type of soil. That's explained in the course to give people an, um, an idea of what, it, what, it, what it's like and, and what, what tools are out there that soil advisors use. And there are other ones here that appear on the screen. The slate test, for example, with the person in the middle of the screen there, she's holding two pieces of soil. That's also included at the end of the course. Um, so you'll be able to answer all these questions. Uh, what do soil advisors do? What are their key skills? Where can you get more training? And how um, how exactly they assess soil? That's kind of included as a to give them a, a, a more an idea of what the uh, key tasks are when you when you work in soil. And then um, we can share a bit more on the next slide about the what it's going to look like to to learn in this course. So. Um, it's very much an active learning experience. So the, although this is the, this information here included on the slide is to demonstrate how in how how much once you've learned something either through um, reading something or looking at videos, then we're then going to quiz you on it or ask you to do exercises to keep you um, checking that you've grasped key concepts that were covered in the um, in the videos and the text. So it's not just a series of videos, there's really a lot of things for you to do and make sure you're mobilizing things that you've learned 
um, in those more uh, in the parts of the course where we've explained things to you. So it's very much every time we learn something new, then we ask questions about it. And to, I can, the next slide illustrates this further because it provides example of what, of what that's going to look like. So quizzes, very, very, um, nothing unusual here. It's a multiple choice where we ask you a question, you have to choose the, the best answer um, from the, the list of options. There are lots of those in there. There are over 20 quizzes, I think, in the whole course. Exercises, there are a few of those where we're going to ask you to go and do something. So we'll send you somewhere online and you'll have to find something on that page and just um, and add the link in um, in the answer box. And that's really something just to make sure you know where to find some information. For example, here it's about the common agricultural policy. We know that they're different, the strategic plans from one member state to another. So um, people who work in soil, if you're asked a question about uh, cover cropping, for example, in a particular country, have to um, go check them for what, what, it, so what the, um, the standards are in your particular member state. So once you've done it once, you'll never forget where to find that information. But that's why we, we included it as an exercise in the course to just go and find that information. So there are several like there, several things like that, which um, make sure you're going to find the information in the right place, which is relevant for your situation. And then finally, there are these fictional case studies where we're going to tell you a story um, about uh, in, based on uh, real stories that are out there. Um, for example, a farmer who's interested in organic fertilizers wants to learn more about a particular organic fertilizer. We'll give you a fact sheet on that um, particular organic fertilizer that person's interested in. And then you have um, roughly 10 questions to answer to help this person out. To, as In the shoes of a soil advisor, you'll have to answer qu their questions. Um, so it's, it's, it's like a quiz, but with a very much... Uh, fictional scenario at the beginning to put you in the shoes of someone that you could that you could um, uh, then then really that you could so you could do that for real in in real life answer these questions so those are the kind of things that appear in the course and then I think on the next slides we're going to explain a bit um, more about how to sign up but first thank you to everyone who's involved we really wanted to emphasize this that uh, there were many experts that were interviewed that were part of the Verde Terra Soil Association or CNA networks, but also many people who were part of the NB Soil Project. So Alchemia Nova, um, IUCN, and then there were other people that we interviewed um, in France uh, from the forest, um, the National Forest Organization in France, as well as people who work in urban urban planning in the, for the Jardin de Demain. And so all these people, we are really grateful for the time that you gave us in interviews that you did with me, with other colleagues, and that you then agreed to read through some of the content that we produced. It was really a group effort to make sure the course could um, be released on time and that we had relevant and um, uh, well-sourced information in, in the course. So thank you again to everyone who was involved. It was important to mention that for us. Uh, really pleased that it could be such a collective effort. And then for those of you interested in signing up, there are a few more slides about that. So this is the sign up page, which you can access via the NB Soil website. You can sign up as of next Monday. At the moment, there's a beta version online. So if you sign up before then, there are a few things that we still want to fix, uh, finalizing some videos, adding some um, satisfaction surveys, for example. So Please wait till next Monday to sign up. And as you attended this event, we'll be able to send everyone who was uh, participating today, we'll send them an email with the exact link, the direct link to this page to be able to sign up. And again, it's free, um, of course, so everyone can, can sign up without there being um, a paywall. And there's even a next slide with what it's going to look like when you sign up. It's, um, you, it's a very simple page. There's not much information to fill out before creating an account on the, the website that we use to create this um, this online course. It's a, so it's a very like much just one page to be able to then start learning afterwards. So all of that will start from next Monday um, to be able to start following the course. And then uh, we welcome any feedback on the course. There's this, uh, There'll be a server by the, at the end of the course where you can share your thoughts and recommendations for more things we could add. There we go. Okay, so back over to you, Laurence. Yeah, thank you, Hania. 
for this uh, inspiring presentation and I hope for all the people here today that uh, makes you want to take part of the experience. And so now we're going to the um, another presentation about uh, other valuable resources. Uh, so Karen, this is uh, this is for you. Go go ahead. Hi, good morning. Yes, so my name is Karen Fisher. I'm a farming advisor as part of the Farm and Land Use Team at Soil Association. And um, so, if you that don't know the Soil Association, we are a charity based in the UK, and we've been established for over seventy five years. Um, so, and so we work across the food supply chain, trying to transform the way we eat, farm and care for our natural world. Oh, wait me a second. Um, so as part of this deliverable, so next slide, Part of this deliverable, this was a roadmap review um, to identify existing training courses and pathways for the upskilling of soil advisors. So for the first part of this, there were two workshops and there was feedback was collected throughout two online workshops, which were held during May this year. Um, these were attended by educational institutions organizations and businesses across Europe, so including academics and soil practitioners. Next slide, please. But the main outcomes we find from these workshops where there's no one practice or methodology provides all the answers for soil health. And um, so it very much depends on those specific conditions and geographical areas. So it depends kind of it differs between country, farm, field, weather conditions in that year. So any courses would need to take that into consideration. And um, we also need, so there's the need for diversity as well. So we need to um, have more diversity in the curriculum and also for the participants that are also involved in those courses to become soil advisors. Next slide, please. Another outcome of the workshop were the necessity for applying theoretical knowledge in practical settings. So there's already a large amount of scientifically proven research, um, which is published. But one of the main challenges that we found was translating that and making it applicable for practice practitioners and soil advisors in field. So, for example, one area at the moment is soil microbiology. So we're starting to get a lot more knowledge and information around soil microbiology and that kind of interaction of ecology in the soil. But how do we apply that in the field? And um, sort of practical advice for farmers and others to take on board. Next slide, please. Um, another outcome from the workshop, a look at like, say, current courses that are available is that kind of they're quite um, mixed in that kind of significance of first-hand experiences. So there's quite a lot of say, um, ongoing courses online, um, but we also need kind of experience of what's kind of been tried in the field, what's worked. Um, so yeah, it's practically need that kind of practical on the ground, the upskilling of the soil advisors. Um, and this does seem lacking in some of the some of the current programs, not all of them, but quite a few of them don't have this kind of practical aspect to them. Um, another really important area which was discussed was that kind of incorporation of soft skills. So it's not just that um, practical knowledge of soil in the field, but it's kind of beyond that practical science of those skills of the importance of actually listening if you're say if, for example if you are working in agriculture advising farmers on soil health it's listening to the farmer and be, be able to like gain that trust of that between the kind of researchers the advisors and the farmers that you're providing the advice to so this is an absolute integral yeah integral part when it comes to upskilling soil advisors next slide please 
Um, and it's also about finding that kind of right local space together. Um, so one of the issues that were highlighted in the workshop, um, said is, again, said is this more kind of accessible training online and on campus courses in soil. But as part of that, there kind of needs to be an in-field aspect of soil. So you could learn about it by feeling it, smelling it, touching the soil. Um, and say one of the biggest challenges identified was accessible kind of demonstration sites for this, to put any of that um, knowledge that you've learnt online into practice. And so if soil advisors, farmers are spread out ge geographically, it's just making that logistically work. Next slide, please. So it's part, as well as the workshops, there was also interviews that were conducted with soil advisors across the UK, Austria, France, Italy, Netherlands, Poland, Spain, and Switzerland um, to discuss with them kind of their current experiences of available soil focused training and educational programs within their own countries. Next slide, please. Um, there was a lot of positive feedback from interviewees regarding specific courses within countries. So there are there are courses available in different guises in each country. But the lack of regulation was a common theme in all interviews, kind of like around who can give advice. Um, so at the moment, in none of the countries, like anybody can call themselves a soil advisor. So there's no kind of certification or verification within that. Um, it was also discussed that an additional focus on soil health is needed. Um, a lot of the courses kind of focus on the, the kind of the structure of soil, but we also need to look more into kind of like say the ecology and the interactions of the biology within that soil. Um, so a link to that is that, that concern that like current soil courses, they just don't kind of go into en enough depth for how complex soil science is. Um, and say another repeated um, conversation and comments is that why, say again, there's a lot of academic research out there, which is highly valid. Um, it again, it's that kind of translation into making that applicable for actual soil health advice on the ground. Um, next slide, please. Um, also in the interviews, Again, it's that kind of on the same theme of that disconnect between courses that are targeted for people with a kind of research science background and then those courses which have a more kind of practical element to them. It's potentially looking at bringing those two things together more. And um, there's also a lack of awareness about existing training courses in country. So again, there's a lot of options, online courses, academic courses, but it's actually making people aware that what's available and where it's available. It's that, say again, as I said in the workshops, it's that local kind of specific information within country as well, because as previously mentioned, some of the regulations also vary country to country. Um, and it's not just about soil advice, it's also about, if we're looking from an agricultural perspective, it's also farmers, they also need direct training in soil management and techniques that improve soil quality. And then, say, an overarching theme again is this like the supply of courses are just not coordinated. And a lot of them say so there's no kind of quality assurance, and the courses just like the content and delivery isn't monitored. Next slide, please. Um, some of the main barriers we found when carrying out this review was the availability of qual qualified advisors. So there's no kind of, say, regulatory specifications around who qualifies the soil advisor across any of the member states or associated countries. So allowing almost anyone to provide advice, regardless of kind of background experience or qualifications. Um, and even if, say, the soil advisors would like to gain a qualification, there's often, like, say, no accreditation or um, kind of any framework within the region. Also, Okay, and also, okay, with the qualified advisors, that kind of also rolls into like the trainer trainer. So we need qualified advisors that are suitably got suitable experience and knowledge to then train others. 
We also found there's a lack of a clear pathway. So if you want to become a stall advisor in any of the countries, there's kind of no clear pathway to follow for that. So there's no kind of standard, standardised training for soil health advice. Um, and say, as in, say, the interviews and the workshops showed, there's kind of a need for this hybrid training model. So we have identified kind of a lack of hands-on, the kind of a key barrier, to say, which is very relevant for upskilling of soil advisors, kind of to better understand soil. And as I said previously, it is that touch and that smell and kind of standing in the soil in a soil pit to kind of see the profile of the soil, to observe the biology in the soil and to look at the different kind of cultivations and drainage designs for that understanding is required. And also, say, so fragmentation of training offers. So there is an increasing availability of soil health courses, both in person and online. Um, but, say, due to the kind of lack of qualifications and accreditations and frameworks, um, it's very, say, fragmented. And so it's just to highlight again, the next slide, um, the fragmentation, say, so the fragmentation of training resources coupled with translating that kind of knowledge into practical advice. This kind of just contributes to take kind of confusion across the sectors in every country. Another key finder, key finding again, like I said, just saying that practical infield experience again. Um, it's often overlooked in existing courses. Um, and it really a bonus of, again, of being in field is that kind of peer-to-peer -peer learning. So not just learning from the person teaching the course, it's learning from, say, advisor to advisor, farmer to farmer, when you're actually in there having that practical experience. Next slide. I'd say it's, and it's that lack of formal pathway and clear accreditation. So, so the absence of country specific regulations and it just say because kind of like hinders the confidence and the quality of the courses. So taking all that into consideration um, of what we found, we've did a roadmap into kind of four different sections. So we'd say we need kind of collaboration, targeted initiatives, networking and knowledge share and assessment for Soil, say the advanced soil module courses that we're designing going forward. So we need to make sure that we have partnerships and get all stakeholders involved in the design of any courses going forward. So we need say agricultural colleges, any organisations or industry bodies. We also need to get involved ac um, educational institutions um, and to say for that um, we need to also work with government agencies and any kind of policy makers. So example taking, say, the new kind of EU soil monitoring law into consideration within that within the countries. And just need a collaborative, that kind of collaborative research approach to any projects that we're doing. Under the targeted initiatives, we felt that we kind of need workshops to discuss any emerging technologies and any technology, technology training. We need kind of like continuous education promotion. So again, at the moment, it's not really, if you're advising on fertilizer or you're kind of say advising on plant protection products in a few of the countries, there are courses, but then also continuous CPD within that um, as part of the ongoing training. We also need to have a combination that works for different situations so that either say online courses and also in-person short courses with actual certification but within that we also need to have say the field workshops and demonstrations we need to establish platforms so that we can knowledge share we also say facilitation so we need to have kind of collaboration within the soil advisory community we need to kind of get together more um, say initially and ongoing this could be through say networking events and all, um, and potentially say mentorship programs as well so more experienced people want say having a mentor of someone kind of coming into the industry and passing on 
and doing training and knowledge that way. Um, on the assessment side, we need, say, just this more cohesion approach. It just needs to be more collaborative and brought together in kind of any assessment. Uh, we also need kind of regular evaluations of, of any upskilling programmes. So once we've designed them, because of, say, research is obviously always coming on and ongoing, we need to make sure that we that any training programmes delivered are kept up to date. And say that can include feedback loops for improvement from people involved in the industry. Uh, and as I said before, kind of like this continuous education is also needed to make sure that knowledge is up to date for any, for any advisors. That's everything. Thank you. Um, thank you for listening and say any questions, um, you can put them in the, in the chat and we'll answer them shortly. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, Karen, for There's a lot, lot of this. information, a short amount yeah. of time. <laughs> <laughs> really inspiring. Uh, so let's move now to the question and answer session. But, uh, well, in fact, we, we rather had some discussion in the chat and not real question. We had a, a point raised uh, about the, the registration to the Academy and, and BSOR Academy for people. Uh, out from Europe, from uh, Nigeria, for instance, and also from Turkey. So now the the problem is fixed. You can register. It's uh, wonderful, <laughs> directly fixed. And um, also uh, Javier wrote it in the in the chat. Uh, it's uh, it's great to see the interest uh, beyond Europe, and so it will be taken into account for the the advanced modules. Uh, also, we we had uh, uh, someone who, who said some questions, some uh, answers to the qu uh, quiz questions uh, were curious. So the answer is enroll and go through it, and and also you can give us your feedback so we can improve and upgrade the, the experience uh, of the MOOC. It can be upgraded. And uh, we did have some uh, reviewers already, of course, but uh, well, feel free to, to give some uh, more feedbacks. And also for more accurate information and training, we will have the advanced modules in the academy. So maybe there, there will be more uh, answers about the, the composting uh, questions. Uh, think I'm looking to the the chat. No, so no more questions so far. Maybe uh, if you want to raise your hand and uh, ask directly some question or reaction comments to the presentation we had this morning. Or if what the participant wants to add something or uh, have a comment about the discussion there that were in the chat. Uh, Javier raised his hand. Who who is speaking? I heard someone. Ah, Javier, uh, yes. Go ahead. Yes, I just I just wanted to say to uh Jirun. Oh, I, I see he has another very pertinent question. But okay, about the specifics of composting, uh, the uh, so the the MOOC is very is, is, is of course is very introductory and very very general. And in the in the academy, the idea is that uh, we we give uh, more in deeper uh, knowledge, like from from the the science and also the demo sites and the experiments that our partners are. Are are running, but uh, we are not giving all the all the answers because they don't exist. Like uh, Karen said in the presentation, like it, it's not it's not a method, it's not a single methodology, it's not a single it's not a single answer. So uh, participants uh, they they also they also have to see how it can apply to the to the context, and we also expect a, a feedback back back uh, back back from them. And the, the time investment, so for for the MOOC, uh, it's uh, it should be around uh, six hours, 
And then for the for the Time Academy, it, this is actually one of the important uh, uh, decisions for the for the design that we we count on. We we also count on, on you to to guide us uh, how to how to structure it and how how should be the time investment and also the balance between the syn synchronous and asynchronous parts. But it, 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 for sure, it should be don't taken into account that. Uh, Lots of the participants. There are people who are already working and having the having the project. Thank you. Oh, Anya, do you want to add something about the the time investment for the book, especially? Yes, um, it's been tailored to last six hours, so that's the promise. Um, people can learn at their own pace, so maybe some people will take a bit less time, a bit lot, or a bit longer. Um, but we can go back to the quiz question as well. I think it would be interesting to end on that 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 topic. Would you mind going back to it, Marta, in the slides? And I can tell you what the what we've given is the correct answer in the in the MOOC. So, Marta, if you go back to the part of the presentation which had that. Oh, it's not there. Um, no spoilers. <laughs> but it's it's interesting to talk about if, as we as we have a bit of time. Um, so it's the slide twenty four. Um, it should be coming up on the screen in a second. But the question was, is what is the disadvantage of using organic matter composted, composted, sorry, at length versus fertilizer, as fertilizer, sorry, versus fresh organic matter. So the, the, there are some advantages of using fresh organic matter. There are some advantages of using uh, organic matter that's been composted. And so we listed some of the um, the fact that it's more expensive. That's, that's not true, uh, that it's more expensive to... Um, uh, compost at length uh, doesn't necessarily add to the cost um, but that's so we're open to feedback on that it has a high nutrient value and could lead to over fertilization that's for example something that's we don't think it will lead to over fertilization so that's a wrong answer as well it's the answer c which we gave as the right answer so it's, it has it's, it's one of the disadvantages is that it has lost some of its biological value and carbon and then D and E are also false. So it's not more difficult to transport. In fact, it's often easier to transport than um, fresh organic matter. And it's less likely to have pathogen risks, even though some um, organic matter that's been combusted isn't, it doesn't necessarily have more risks, um, but, but it's, it's true that, um, I mean, sorry, some organic matter, fresh organic matter doesn't necessarily have a pathogen risk, but the, more, the longer you leave it, the, the less likely it is to um, have risk. Well, that's, 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 and it's explained that every, all of the quizzes, when, when there's a question and then you select an answer, there's a, an explanation that's given to explain which of the answers were right and which were wrong. Um, so maybe we can reword uh, the, the answer C by saying it has often uh, lost some of its rather than much of the biological value um so there okay okay yeah so thank you hania uh i'm interrupting you because uh, i see the time is and someone has their hand raised yeah there is a question from uh Kaira pereira sorry if i don't pronounce it well and if you can present your introduce yourself and ask a question and, and after we will go to the wrap-up session uh, hello, uh, I just want to say I'm quite excited for this. I think I've been watching now for one year and uh, waiting for the for the start. But yeah, I live in Slovenia and uh, I studied permaculture and environmental science and also studying soil science with Dr. Elaine Ingram, which is an online course. And I'm working as an arborist, but also setting up to do soil advising in Slovenia and uh, and the region and also watching others who are also starting at this very moment. And uh, I have some experience from the tropics, and I'm, I, I will do this um, course that you have put up now. It's very interesting, but sometimes, because I'm just basically completely alone, 
uh, was seeking, you know, mentorship or, or advice because otherwise it feels like it's just doing all this completely alone. And I see the EU is saying everything that's in my mind. We need advisors. We need this. But sometimes it feels a little bit, yeah, alone. So I was wondering that already in, in this course or in this module, is there a way to speak with someone and ask questions or ask advice? Or is that something you think to do a bit later on? Or, or how much personal interaction could there possibly be, I guess, is my question. Okay. Do you want me to answer that, Laurence? Yeah, yeah uh, uh, so uh, uh, I will not answer, but I think the question is more for the advanced modules than the, uh -huh. the MOOC. Yes, um, in the MOOC there are forums, so people can post uh, further information and ask questions that pro perhaps will be answered by mother other members, other people in the forums. Um, so there's a forum for each of the nature-based solutions that are presented. And then, um, but I think it's in the advanced modules where there's really going to be someone that you can... Uh, interact with and ask questions to so there'll be more um less of a mooc and more of that there'll be an actual um, uh -huh. you can ask questions yeah and, javier and is giving the answer in the in the chat in fact or javier you want to 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 take the, the yes, floor? thank you just just the same like uh, the idea is that during the advanced models we have also uh like uh, meetings and a, a specific uh, question and answer uh, sessions so much more extended than now and uh, this this mentorship that should uh, that should be for the final project because the at least the last 6 months like the the whole tr the whole training should be 2 years and at least the, the last six months should be dedicated to a final uh, project of your your own final project with uh, with mentor including mentorship. Uh -huh. Okay. okay. Well, thank you, Kara. But I think you're, thank you. It's a really good point because the the relation with with uh, real people is really important. We have yeah, another sure. question about the. Uh, I think it's important. Uh, even though it's the time, but uh, about the the um, the cost of attending the the advanced modules, uh, Javier, maybe you you want to answer and then make the see. Uh, your time and your energy and and the the equip the equipment that you that you will need that uh, it will be a computer internet connection etc. But there's not cost. Every every this uh, this is a research and innovation project. Every everything is paid. Uh, by the by the European uh, European Union, except the the cost for uh, British and Swiss uh, participants, which are paid by the funding agencies. So, super. And uh, can I answer about certificate of participation? Yeah. Yes, ahead. definitely. We will have a certificate of of participation. The only thing is like. This is a, not an official training yet. So basically, you will you will be a kind of co-researcher in a research project. And uh, some uh, some of the universities who are participating now, I remember uh, I, 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 I don't remember uh, which ones exactly, but one of them for sure is uh, Boku University of Life Sciences in Vienna. If you join one of their uh, masters then they can consolidate some uh, credits. Always for the advanced modules, not, not, not for the MOOC. <laughs> OK, thank you, Javier. So I see it's uh, 12 o'clock. Maybe, Javier, you want to, to add some words uh, for ending the, the meeting? I think I think uh, let's try to finish uh, to finish on time. But uh, yeah, big thanks to everybody. I see that there's. I, I hope you really enjoyed the the MOOC. I think it's very very nicely designed, and uh, I see that uh, I'm really happy to see so much interest in the Soil Academy and also to raise these uh, important issues uh, that uh, we need to also to finalize uh, together with you and with other stakeholders during the the co-design process uh, like that will be the first half of uh, 2000, 2024 and uh, yeah um, thank you very much and and yeah uh, in, enjoy enjoy the the MOOC 
and and see you in the in the academy. Yeah, I hope so. So thank you, everyone. And so don't hesitate to go to the website of NBSOL. There you will have uh, some information and also register to the the newsletter. So thank you, everyone. Bye bye. Have a nice day.